Hello class, welcome to week six. So a um, couple of nuts and boltsy things before we uh, move on to discussion of topics from last week. Um, first thing, your uh, critiques are up. So we have eight students in class, four people per group. Those are available. You can um, post anytime through March 4th. I recommend that you do that sooner rather than later. Um, so <clears throat> I, uh, one of the questions that came up was whether we critique everyone's stories. So yes, you critique everyone's stories. Um, there are five handouts in posted in each uh, discussion board forum under each critique group. Please read those five handouts in their entirety. I'm not going to cover them because I really do want you to read them. Um, so you are in a member. You are a member of a four-person group, which means that you are critiquing three other people's stories, and then you're also posting a self-critique. And the critiques as a form are um, like a letter to that person about a page long in which you talk about you know the things they've done well and constructive criticism and what they could improve on at the risk of making it sound like a formula i highly recommend that you post as um a positive thing first and then constructive criticism and then end with a positive thing um, part of the reason that the structure is important is um, so that you're not offending anyone from the outset and then you're not saying something that's constructive criticism and then just leaving it there. Um, if you balance it with positive things before and after, um, people feel a little more comfortable receiving that kind of feedback. So like I said, um, I'm sorry if it comes off as a formula and if and if you can do it in a way that doesn't feel like a formula, don't feel like you have to follow it, but it's just a guideline just because I want us to be re receptive to the feedback that we do get. And, um, and I do want you to be authentic. I don't want it to feel, you know, synthetic or artificial in any way. Um, you know, but I also I also want you to meet the other person where they are. So kind of as I had said in the um, Daring Greatly handout, treat um, feedback like meeting somebody for coffee, right? So if you were to meet somebody for coffee, you wouldn't start off immediately like be like, well, you did this thing and it wasn't great, but this part was good and then leave. And the opposite isn't true. You wouldn't meet, for somebody, meet somebody for coffee, tell them all the things you liked about their story tell them all the things they need to fix and then leave, right? You want to balance it. So that's just a guideline, um, but hopefully it's a helpful guideline. So also don't forget your self-critique. The self-critique is so important because the self-critique allows you the opportunity to recognize the things that you think you did well and the things that you know you can improve on. A self-critique is a moment for you to be able to analyze what you've written from like a more critical thinking perspective. Because, I mean, all of us have something to think about, something that we've written, and we all think about it. But few of us ever draft it like a self-critique or like a letter to ourselves. And because you don't do that in your own writing life, sometimes you don't get the full benefits of experiencing that kind of self-feedback. So three critiques for your three other group mates and a self critique that is all due on March 4th. Additionally, your packet one is due Monday, February 29th at noon. I'm going to click on it here so I don't forget to tell you anything. Um, so your um, prompts um, for the packets are literally just your exercise posts from the discussion board. So any exercise post between weeks two and six that you want more feedback with, please include those in the packet. Because I want you to be able to say, you know what, I liked that sensory image exercise, but I also need help with it. And so whichever the two pieces that you want the most feedback on, please select those two. One, preface each prompt by telling me which prompt it is because sometimes I'll read it and I might enjoy it, but I don't know where it fits. So please preface each one with an explanation of what the prompt is. Two, include the piece. And then three, please include a minimum of three specific questions for feedback. There are two links on 
uh, what appropriate questions are. Appropriate questions don't quiz me, right? So don't be like, what was on the other side of the door or something like that because I won't answer a question like that. I, I don't, I don't, I mean, you. I'm the teacher and so you shouldn't be quizzing me. But if you ask me a question about like genuinely wanting to know how you can improve in your dialogue or how you can improve in plot or how you can improve in structure. Maybe you're concerned that you are telling more than showing. These are all valid questions that you can ask me and I would love to give you feedback for that. So you're going to have your two prompts um, in the series of three format, uh, the, the question, prompt, I'm sorry, prompt, prompt explanation, prompt question. So in that format twice and then at the very end of it you're going to include a narrative paragraph on what your favorite element of creative nonfiction writing is so far and why. This can be something like characterization. This can be something like showing versus telling. Um, anything that we've talked about so far in class with regards to creative nonfiction, I would love to read about it. There is no word count minimum on this. I just kind of want to see where your thought process is and where you are learning and growing. So that's what I'm primarily interested in. Um, other things. Um, we are reading uh, The Orchid Thief after spring break. So please get started on that. I just want to have a little brief moment about time management really quickly. Um, time management is up to you all to organize for yourself. Time management is about you recognizing what kind of um, lifestyle is manageable to you with reading and writing and critiques and your packet and um, life stuff like your family and your job and your errands. Um, I would absolutely hate for you all to have to work over spring break. I want you to have spring break off because I, I have this genuine belief, this pedagogical genuine belief that we get spring break because we need it. So I don't want you to have to work on spring break. Um, so that being said, if you want to have spring break off, please um, think about your time management now. Please start reading now. Please get all of your critiques done. I mean, those are due before spring break, but if you get your critiques done and then you can move on to the book or whatever process works for you, please just be aware of it. Um, Cause as I said, I would love for you to have spring break off if that's what you want for yourself. Okay. Week six. I am very excited about this week's exercise. I'm so excited because, um, first of all, to start with, I, I found this quote this week. Um, Aeneas, Aeneas, I don't really know how to say her name. Aeneas Nin said, we write to taste life twice in the moment and in retrospection. I thought that was such a good quote for our class. Um, but also this week's post is about genealogy and what your background is. And for some of you, maybe you don't know. And for some of you, maybe you have this great family story that you've always wanted to write down and shouldn't. And I have this very firm belief that our families have stories. And if we don't write them down, who will? Who will? And, and, and it breaks my heart to think of all of these rich family stories that are lost because people don't write them down because people think, oh, I'll remember that forever. And then they get to the end of their lives and they've forgotten. And I think creative nonfiction writing allows us the opportunity to save those stories from extinction. So that being said, this week is all about genealogy and, and what stories you can tell from within your family. Um, this is a great moment for us because we get to read your family stories, but a great moment for you and for your family because those family stories are preserved. So I have two links available to you, um, family search and archives.com. Archives.com is not free, so it is optional. You don't have to take this route, but I signed up for it. It's like $10 a month, I think. Saw so much cool stuff. I got to see um, my grandparents' um, marriage certificate. I got to see my mom's birth certificate, like cool things that I've never actually seen in real life. I saw my great grandfather's draft card. I mean, like really cool old documents. Again, you have to pay for it. So if you choose to take that path, I'm making it available to you, but you do not have to make that choice. FamilySearch.com 
.com.org. Uh, I think it's .com. Um, Family Search, and it's not showing me here, uh, is a free website. And I signed up for it last year because um, uh, for NaNoWriMo, I chose to write a fictional novel from the perspective of one of my ancestors on my mom's side. Um, she was a seamstress who had come from the Isle of Man, came to San Francisco, started working for a wealthy man and his family, and made so much money that she could pay for her entire family to come over from England come to find out after doing the Seattle Underground tour um, a couple years ago in Seattle, in Pioneer Square, um, seamstress was a euphemism for prostitute. So there was a lot of family history there that I wanted to explore. Um, and and it, there's the, also that moment that when you explore your family history, you recognize that this is your own background and, and what are the implications for you? And and I chose to write a fictional novel because I knew from this relatively illiterate side of the family that there wouldn't be very much, you know, documentation. But this week's exercise post is your opportunity to find some kind of fact and to try and do research and to try and write a creative nonfiction piece that might resemble more literary journalism, right? Because remember we talked about how... Um, how memoir and some creative nonfiction is about an internal focus and literary journalism is an external focus. So this isn't about you. I mean, it's kind of about you because it's your family, but um, it's about somebody else as the, as the character or as the protagonist. So what are some stories you can tell? I'm, I'm really interested. I can't wait to find this out. Um, yeah, familysearch.com or .org, whatever it is, is a really interesting website because um, I found out that I'm related to, like, Henry VIII and uh, uh, Brunhilde of the Visigoths who murdered her grandchildren and all kinds of weird, cool stuff. So that is your week six post. And then um, just a couple more things. Uh, one of you this week said that story evolves out of scene. That is a very good quote. Um, and then kind of to complement that, another one of you said that a uh, good piece is about showing and telling. That is kind of laying the groundwork for your revision posts. I have something under the week 13 tab about revision, and that really helps to balance showing and telling. So hold that thought, and it's coming. So keep up the good work this week. Make sure that you check out those websites like familysearch.com or .org. The link is on there. I just can't remember if it's .com or .org. And then um, you also have your packet coming up. You have your critiques coming up. And don't forget to read The Orchid Thief. All right, I'll keep up the good work.